Can I get a roll call, please? Mr. Mazzarini? Here. Mr. Kaczynski? Here. Mrs. Zalesnik? Mr. Cora? Present. Mr. Kramer? Here. Mr. Kearney? Here. Mr. Kopak? Here. Mrs. Murphy? Here. And Ms. Mariana? Here. Thank you. At this time, before we get into public comments, I would like to have Dr. Bonanna speak to the room and to the public regarding her announcement. Sure. Um, so there's a few things that I'd like to share with you this evening. Uh, first of all, just some updates and news. Uh, the Rotary Club of Bridgeville, South Fayette, hosted a middle school recognition and a scholarship luncheon. Several middle school students were recognized and two CV high school students received scholarships. Also, the League of Women Voters hosted their first annual student registration opportunity. This event was organized through Mr. Harheis Civics Classes. The League hopes that this will be an annual event with the district. I'd also uh, like to thank the Chartiers Valley Educational Foundation for their generous donation of $5,000. The monies will assist in supplementing costs for AP testing and also AP professional development. So thank you for that. <coughs> Congratulations to our Parkway West students who took the NOPD recently. Their performance was commendable with 94% of them reaching proficiency and 76% of them scoring advanced on that exam. So lastly, I'd like to address a growing concern without, throughout the community uh, regarding last month's budget presentation. So with that, I want to be very clear. I know that um, this is a, a concerning and a point of contention with, amongst us. Fiscal responsibility is of the utmost importance to this Chartiers Valley School District. <clears throat> and annually, it's our responsibility to ensure the district and its taxpayers' finances and own resources are being utilized to the fullest growth and benefit of the district, specifically our students. When a budget is initially proposed, it's not unusual to be over. It's your Christmas wish list. We go through this process, and through time and time and time, the goal is to balance that budget. The slide listed regarding said reductions were if the district looked at no other means. So that was a worst case. We don't look at anything else. But that was just a tangible item there. So with that being said, our acting director of finance and myself are conducting our due diligence to go through that and to get that number and balance that budget. So although that looked very scary in a publicly without comment, she also said that was without no other action being done. So please know the ultimate goal is to bring a very closely balanced, if not balanced budget in June to this district for that to be the case. So it's an unusual year with me coming in in April with an acting for our Director of Finance and Operations. So this process may be a little compressed, but nonetheless, again, that's the goal, to balance it and not to impact our <coughs> programs and not to impact our students and not to impact our current staff. That's the goal. Okay. So on Tuesday, May 22nd, we will have another budget update, and you'll see as this goes through. Again, it's a little compressed. Generally, that's a January to now process. So you'll see it again, and then again in June, and then again the second week of June. Okay? Thank you, Ms. Rasmussen. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to have anybody in the audience who would like to uh, make a public comment, please step up to the mic, give us your name and address, and let the for your comments. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hi, I'm Diane Peterson. My address is 1706 Winnell Drive. Um, thank you, Dr. Panetta, for the clarification and um, the commentary on the proposed uh, budget for next year. Um, that said, I'd still like to express in this forum our concern over what we saw. Um, as a parent of both a 7th and a ninth grader, I've experienced firsthand the value of well-staffed schools, dedicated teachers, and reasonable class sizes, uh, as well as diverse course offerings. Um, oftentimes, music and the arts are the first courses to suffer in downsizing. Um, as I'm sure you know, numerous studies have shown measurable declines in the quality of education when components such as class size and arts offerings are affected adversely. 
if you make the cuts that we saw on that slide presentation that you referenced, there will be a perceived, if not real, drop in quality. And that is concerning to us. Um, along with that perceived decline in the quality of the educational offerings, invariably there would be a decline in property values, which would affect everybody, as I'm sure you've considered. Um, it also remains unclear to me how we are currently in the financial position that we're in, seeing a shortfall of $3 million. And I understand this is kind of a starting point and you would be working from here, but again, you know, when I tuned in in 2014 and 2015 at the outset of this construction project, uh, when it was originally proposed, the funding was discussed, and future operations costs as well as construction costs were expected to be well within projected revenues. And I don't understand how we find ourselves now looking at a slide presentation that's saying in three different scenarios we're about $3 million short. Um, regardless, I still don't believe that cutting 15 to 20 percent of the staff is the way to go. Um, so in summary, and again, speaking to your comments, um, I ask you to please diligently consider other options. Thank That's you. exactly what we're doing. Thank you so much. Anyone else? Hi. Hi. Veronica Winsheimer, 1398 Cardinal Drive. Um, I'm the parent of three children in the district. I have uh, two high schoolers and a middle schooler. And I'm here pretty much to back up what Diane Peterson had to say. Um, my children came home last Friday, and our uh, dinner table was a buzz. They started hearing uh, some rumors going around the school that teachers were going to be let go. Um, my middle schooler overheard teachers talking, joking about uh, the fact that maybe they had just been hired and now they were going to be fired, and um, and it caused a lot of anxiety um, at my household. Um, two of my children, uh, my daughters in ninth grade and seventh grade, are involved with the arts program. Um, one in orchestra and band, and the other in, in band, marching band. And um, as Diane was saying, those often are some of the first programs to uh, be considered to, to draw. And so I, I just want to say that they're very important to the Winchheimer family. I hope that uh, we're able to do this budget in such a way that uh, those cuts can't happen. And, had easy anxiety in my household um, for what my children uh, have been hearing going around the school. So, thank you very much. Thank you for being here today. Anyone else? <coughs> Hi, my name is Martha Cagle, and I'm from 548 on the Street Extension, Bridgeville. And I have two sons, one's in eighth grade, one's in tenth grade. They are both involved in theater in school, and I certainly don't want arts cut, but I certainly don't want teachers cut either, because I feel even as people retire and you don't replace them, it's at the expense of our students. Even retiring teachers need to be replaced and retired staff. I agree with everything that Diana and Veronica said before me, and I just wanted to make sure that you are aware that we are all concerned about what has been voiced recently. And I would like to just ask the question, what happened to the $25 million surplus that we had a few years ago that we were told when they, before they were building the schools that it wasn't going to be raise our taxes at all. Now we are having a referendum in May about raising our taxes for security, which should have always been in the budget. Right now, honestly, there isn't a whole lot of security in the schools. Anybody can come in the back ways, and I realize it's something that's important to do, but to have to raise the taxes to do it is something that should have been in the budget to begin with. And now to be at a $3 million deficit when we were told before they started building the schools that it was not going to raise taxes, I don't understand where the money is. So I would like an answer to that question. I'd be glad to address some of some of your questions. Um, when when you say someone said that there would not be any tax increases while we're building the schools, or, or what happened to the twenty five million dollars, we set aside the twenty five million dollars for the construction project. So understand that if we didn't have that money, that would have been even more that we would have had to fund for the construction project. So that was a huge savings. Let 
we had it set aside, ready to go towards the projects. When, when you talk about we're not going to be raising taxes, there's no infinite day when you can say, I'm never going to raise taxes again. <clears throat> I've been on the board five years now, and I know for a fact that we've only raised taxes one time in that five years. Right. And it was a minimal raise. And we are still the lowest millage in, in Allegheny County or Western Pennsylvania for school districts. That can only go on for so long until you start seeing things like cuts in, in, in staffing, cuts in, in programs. So you can't do it forever. So there's no infinite time when you, we can say that we're not going to ever raise taxes because of the, the construction projects. Sometimes your, your revenues, which we control through contracts, uh, have to, or your, your expenses through contracts, don't meet up. So you have to be able to be realistic about what you have to do from both sides of the equation. And I think that this board and, and our, our staff here have done a magnificent job of trying to make that all work without raising taxes. When we, when we talked about the security issue, this was something that was brought to us by you guys, by concerned parents, regarding what needed to be done. We probably, as a district, spend more on security now than most. We have in-house officers with, with firearms in our buildings. Most districts do not do that. There is a large budget, a half a million dollars we put towards security just alone on those guys, not alone the rest of the staff that's in our district. So to say that we don't already have that in our budget, we do. What we were trying to address is a question of security for the rest of our um, requests from our parents. We wanted this, we wanted that, we wanted this. When you start thinking about those things, they are permanent expenditures that people want. Staffing, psychologists, more principals, all these things add up to long-term fixed costs. And in order to do that, there's only one way to do it, and that's to increase your revenues. So that's why there was you know, questions about what can we do. I didn't want to be the one to sit here and say, I don't want to secure your child any more than I can afford to today. So let's ask the voters, how, how do you want to handle it? And that's why the referendum went out. So uh, I hope that helps clarify some of your questions. The, the $25 million went to the school, school construction. The, the construction is on time and on budget, as Mr. Day will attest to here as he, as he presents his budget tonight, his, 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 his uh, update. Um, you know, I've addressed this a half a dozen times to different folks during the week because, you know, people have emailed me directly, and I, I hope that, you know, if there's ever an opportunity, don't ever hesitate, because I will be glad to answer any questions. This board is transparent, this district is transparent. The slide that Procina Cordisco put up there at our last meeting, it was alarming, and, and to, to, in hindsight, if we'd have seen that slide before she did it, we would have never let her do it. It was part of her presentation that we didn't see. I think what happens in those cases with business managers, they always look worst case scenario. They have to build from somewhere, but at the end of the day, we hope that we can get this budget very, very close without cutting staff, without cutting programs, and with moving forward. So please rest assured, that is our goal. It just seems like every time I'm at one of these meetings, they're asking for more money out of half, but we are still on budget for the buildings? We are on budget and on time. Okay, that's good. I'm glad to hear that. I also know that they didn't budget for furniture in the new buildings. Which we didn't plan on it. No, they didn't. We did not plan Save on money. Yep. Didn't save money. Yep. So we don't need new furniture? No, because what you do, you cycle it out when it's kind of getting worn, you buy new on a regular basis, is that helpful? I mean, we'll budget for it as, as, as needed, but no, we, we, when we looked at the hard costs initially, the, the initial budget for the school project was over $115 million. We kept whittling it down, whittling it down to realistic, what we need, what this district can afford without going crazy, and we wanted to focus all the dollars around education. And furniture, although it wasn't perfect, it was in good enough shape that we could move from building to building. And our janitorial staff did a, a great job over the course of the last two years doing that. We've been able to pretty much save everything in the district and not have to spend furniture money. So, but we will cycle it through as, as we always have. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Okay. Anyone else? Well, I told everyone I wasn't going to do this today. I'm glad you're here. Hi, thank you. My name is Michelle Sedlak. I live at 1595 Spreading Oak Drive. Dr. Janetta, I don't know. Did they warn you about me yet? No. Oh, thank goodness. We would never <laughs> <laughs> um, if you, 
I just wanted to say that um, while the slide apparently didn't come with the disclaimer that you just gave, would it be hindsight being 2020? You're right. Would have been nice. However, all things being equal, I'm pretty sure everybody in this room will tell you, I've been here for the last two years, sometimes the only parent, sometimes the only person talking. I'm thrilled it got people to the table for this discussion. And that, I mean, I really want to say that. I'm glad there's people here for this discussion because a lot of what I've been saying has fallen on deaf ears throughout the community, throughout this room. I'm pretty sure 18 months ago I said I was concerned that we were going to be house poor, brand new building, and no furniture to put in it. And I was using that as an analogy, not the actual furniture. I knew we were reusing furniture. But I called us house poor, and I said that over 18 months ago. I said this is where we would be. And everybody, you know, even, even the community members that I talked to were like, oh, no, it'll be okay. It'll be okay. It'll be okay. We're now at the point where, thank God that slide came up, because no, it's not okay. And if we want to talk about security issues, one of the things that I thought of today, we're going to buy metal detectors. We're going to make this look more like a prison. Yeah, it has been compared to a prison. The actual architectural design is not from Matt Hansen. But it's going to be more of a prison with the metal detectors coming in. Come on, how about small class sizes where teachers get to individually know each student and know when something's a little off with the student and the student isn't performing to their abilities or they're breaking up with their girlfriend and isn't stable? Or how about the process where we do refer students who need extra attention, extra, extra care, need different things like that? That's where we're failing. And that's where we're failing in security, too. Because, you know, and I mean, I, without invoking names or anything else, but one of the most recent biggest shootings in February, the kid was kicked out of three schools instead of getting the mental health that he needed. So that's where it starts. Put up all the metal detectors you want in the world. They'll come up with another way if they're that despondent. So I'm less concerned about what happens with security. And if we want to talk security, let's make it giant campus-wide security, including this building. We need better lighting. We need a lot of we need a lot more things. But once again, we're house poor. And last year I almost fell off that chair right there when we didn't take the index because I thought we were going to be in trouble this year. And you remember, I almost fell off that chair. We should have taken the index last year. And we are the lowest, and I just want I'm saying this loud enough so it is on the record. We are the lowest millage in all of Allegheny County. We don't come close to anybody, even people who have pay higher taxes than we do, like Carlington, are performing better than we are. And we who want to hold ourselves to these standards, I think that really needs to be looked at. And since you're taking the community's out input into, into your decision, Let's seriously take the community's input into this decision. Ask the community what they want, and I'll say no more taxes, I get that. But I also don't want to only be able to sell my house for $60,000 because I live in a neighborhood where I can't get a kid to graduate. So once again, I'm asking you to take that under consideration, I'm telling you thank you again for your time. I do appreciate the thankless, but <coughs> thankless job that you guys do, I really do. Um, and in a day when we should be celebrating teachers, I and mean, teachers are worried about their jobs today. Today is National Education Day, by the way. Yep. Only a couple of us wearing red. <laughs> Do I really have to put my home? You guys know where I live. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? How did you want I don't have to either. Um, Heather Downey, 401 Bluefield Drive. I was the one who kind of stirred the pot publicly um, to get some people here. Because the people who trusted that this would be something that everybody dealt with all of a sudden had that big red flag and dropped their jaw and said, excuse me? So that's why some people were here. Well, that's good. Well, and so that's good. Right. It's good that some people care. But now, we need to put everything out on the table. I just wanted to mention one thing that 
I hope gets considered is where I live, there's a whole bunch of new construction. More taxes, lots more taxes, big houses. And I'm fine with more taxes. I'm fine with personally paying more taxes so that my kids get a better education. And other kids. I'm only going to be in the district with kids for five more years. So I don't want to leave the trainer for the one time. But also, that means more kids. I mean, big visions of homes with kids, probably 2.4 kids or whatever the number is. So not only do we need to think about who's there now and what they have to deal with, going through a metal detector, hopefully having a smaller class, whatever the case may be, think about this influx of people that hopefully will keep coming because our district can be a solid district. And that's all I have <clears throat> Anyone else? Okay, I, I would just like to address a couple of the things that, you, that as uh, you guys brought up, and I really appreciate the comments because it, it does it does make our board and our district and our administration. <clears throat> realize there's there's some things that that we need to do better and and one of them is communicate and we know that this communication piece has been a struggle without a communication person in place um, but it also becomes frustrating from our our side of the table because we know things are way better than as described in some of the emails we saw going out around on Facebook and and in the in the, in the slur that the district was receiving as a result. So I would just like to say that when I look around our district, I see wonderful, wonderful things. And I see property values that have been going up consistently. And I see new construction, people wanting to come to our district to live, work, and educate their children. So I can say to the public, I think it's probably, you have to be very responsible when you put things out there in Facebook world or on social media, that you don't damage yourself. Because that's what can happen. It's self-inflicted wounds on a lot of occasions where people go to look back at social media trend and say, what were these people talking about? Now, I, I take full responsibility for the communication that was, that was done. We need to do a better job of it. But at the same time, I just ask everybody, please be responsible when you're putting things out there because they never, do, they never go away. But I see so much stuff. My wife's a realtor. I know what every neighborhood in this district is worth. And I know five years from today going backwards, we've probably gone up 30 to 40% in some areas. And I know we're getting new construction and those tax dollars are gonna be great. But when, when you think about what our millage is versus what that new construction is, Again, the pace doesn't keep up with our expenses. So we, we welcome new construction. We welcome new people moving into our community. But we also have to be realistic about how we approach it. So I just ask everybody, please be, our, please be on, on, on the district's uh, side when it comes to promoting our district. And we will do everything in our power to communicate the positive things and the right message to all of you. And I, I, as soon as we get our communications person in place, we know that that is one of our biggest concerns and we have to address it. So trust me, going forward, we will do a better job of communicating. But I thank everybody for your comments. Uh, you already presented your superintendent's report, so we'll move on beyond that. And we'd like to move on to the consent agenda now. Um, 3.1 through 3.2. Not, not a big consent agenda. <laughs> 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 also, uh, we have a motion in 3.1 to approve the minutes of the school board meeting from April 10th and April 24th. Has everyone had an opportunity to review the minutes? Everybody comfortable with them? There was one thing that I saw. There was a typo on one of the minutes yes. about, the, about how millage works. Yes. I thought that could be misleading. Yes, I, and I think it was in the latter of the two. It was in yeah. the second. Yes. second yeah. one. That could be corrected. Yeah, so we need that to be corrected. Other than that, we'd like to get that approved. So can I get a motion to approve three, four, oh no, we'll do them together. Um, the human resources report. Uh, this is a motion to approve the human resources report. Any questions or comments on the HR report? 
some folks coming and going, but nothing serious. Yeah. Okay. I'd like to get a motion to approve the consent agenda items 3.1 through 3.2. So moved. Mr. Porter first. Second. Mr. Mariano second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. Ladies, were you, were you both eyes out there? Yes. Thank you. I would just like to make a comment about the, the minutes, that yep. I really appreciate the timeliness of the publication of the minutes. I've seen a, a real uh, improvement in um, the turnaround of those, so I wanted to express gratitude. Thank you. Thank you for the comment. Okay, on to our action discussion items, 4.1. Uh, this will be to approve our monthly construction report, and we can do that once Mr. Jason Day presents. Okay. Perhaps this is going off the executive summary that everybody has as part of the. Um, so, in all seriousness, the phase 2A for the high school had a good month, a really good month. And it continues uh, as you drive by and see it from wherever, so and I are just driving around the campus. Uh, so, Rikon, they do owe me the May update, um, but he is working on it uh, partly because of a lot of activities have occurred and continue to get completed. Um, so, with regard to the high school, I'll kind of jump around a little bit. Um, the phase 2A is full steam ahead, uh, really a variety of work happening. The roof is saying 95% complete on the high roof. There's a couple lower tiered roofs, um, but really by the middle end of next week, it'll be 100% dried in. Uh, masonry work continues inside the building, particularly on the firewall in between the new addition and the pool and the gym. Um, again, a variety of MEP, mechanical, electrical ductwork, piping, um, electrical rough-in is all happening. Uh, the fireproofing continues, they're getting closer. Um, they should be finishing up. They're on the fourth floor, which is their last floor. They did three, two, one. Had to wait for the roof to get on and do the fourth floor, so they're up there now. So they'll probably be on site in another couple weeks. Um, and as you can see, the exterior framing and sheathing and the insulation system is started and ongoing. Um, they started the concrete slab on grade. They did four last week and were prepping this week for another four, which I think they actually started for Monday of next week. Uh, so again, lots of work happening in the addition. Um, related, backing up to the middle school, um, Again, the, the punch lists are dwindling. Um, they're doing a really good job there. Um, the back check uh, is going to happen probably in the summertime for my KM once people are out of the building just to verify that everything's gotten done to a satisfactory condition. Uh, the kitchen, again, is, is done. The punch list is complete. There are a few warranty items uh, that we've been working with the vendor to resolve. But they've been cooperative with us and Brenda. Uh, the commissioning has started two weeks ago, um, so the functional testing is ongoing. Um, so it, it may be worth at one point to just have a discussion with HF Lens and maybe invite him to give kind of overall stats and how that is. Maybe a, a month, um, just generally to tell you where that's at. But they, they had, it has been going well. They've been. Um, Flushing out some issues uh, that are going to be resolved. So I think the process is doing what it's supposed to do. Just uh, so the public's aware, Jason, could you describe what the commissioning agent is actually supposed to do? Yes, yeah, so the commissioning agent is a, a separate vendor from ourselves. Uh, and basically, they go around it and test and verify that the mechanical system is functioning as designed. Um, so that process for the middle school started about two and a half weeks ago. So they go through and they do different scenarios of uh, temperature changes, fluctuation in the outside air and so forth. But they'll test all the rooftop units, all the BAV boxes, all the fans, 
anything that's inside a building that provides heat or cool. So that's the quick and dirty of what they're doing. Um, the way HF Lens has uh, done this uh, for many, many years. They've done it for my company, PJ Dick, uh, numerous times. And they were hired by the district to commission two buildings that you're getting for this construction project. Thank you. They also make sure that our warranties are in place once once the uh, product is yes. functioning properly. Yeah, yeah. And, he, and they'll maintain, um, and that's part of the service he provides. Once we go through the, the functional testing, verify that all the warranties are in place, and then you'll have an electronic database for every single piece of equipment um, that got tested and the results uh, that you can refer back to once we're out of here in two more years. So uh, the note, uh, we still have a, a little bit of money on that project retain and retainage. I'll keep you up to date as that progresses from month to month. And we have started to get some O&M documents for the operation and maintenance manuals. Formally, uh, they owe us you know, so many sets of these binders and warranties and operation manuals. So the contractors have started to formally submit those. Um, so meeting that project is kind of starting to go down the path of, of the closeout. Are we receiving those electronically and manually? Yeah, you get the uh, hard copies and electronic copies. Okay. Um, that's really the status of, of the work, both the middle school and the high school. Um, financial status, uh, there's a couple changes on the agenda tonight. Um, provided the update with the contingency, so the construction contingency that's part of the budget. Um, we draw from that when there's changes uh, that are acceptable. So I can jump right into those and then go over any of those, Tony, if you want me to. Please. Okay, so on there tonight, uh, we have a, uh, start with the middle school one. Two for Merritt Electric, one for the high school, one for the middle school. Uh, the Merritt Electric one is, is seven items, really, that we had them do at the end of the job. Um, that were either, a majority of them were errors and emissions. Um, one owner generated uh, item that they had to do. Most of these were done on time and material, and um, they've been completed, works in place, so this is just the value of all seven, seven items uh, when they were completed. I can go through each one unless there's questions for any of the seven items from anybody. Chase, would you do this uh, going forward? Uh, because we, we have had some of the board members concerned about when we're grouping these as a general uh, change order, yeah. and some of, some are district generated and some are not. Error, okay. Some are error and emissions. Could you just separate the ones that are district order uh, generated, just so we can we know what those are. When you present that to us, do we see that as a district generated? Uh, yeah, I, 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 I've been trying to identify uh, if, you, if you have a copy of it. I'm not already on mine. That's why I just want to make sure because someone brought it to my attention. He just wanted to make sure. Okay, we, we're good. Yeah. All right, so as long as it's that way and we can see it, I want to make sure that we can see it where, where the change was being generated from. Yeah, that we, I think I've been doing that. For a while, but yeah, that discussion happened. That same question. Um, so really, I think that the owner generated one really was a function of reusing existing tech ed equipment rather than buying all new. Sort of as an example of the furniture. Um, however, some of that equipment is old, and some of the whips that connect to that piece of equipment needed repair to replace to plug into the new outlets. So. Um, that was not part of the contract, so we had Merritt do that. Uh, again, a small cost to fix those whips rather than buy you know, so much new equipment from the tech app. So that's a good example of what you're trying to do to save money. Um, that's really the Merritt one for the middle school, just really kind of wrapping up the loose ends uh, that they did to make some things function there. The uh, high school one uh, is an error omission. Unfortunately, it's, it's a pretty pretty big value. 
uh, but it is required by code and a life safety issue. Um, should have been in the documents, so you're getting value out of it. Uh, what it is is really the windows that are going to look into the pool area from the common space have fire shutters. Um, the power and the connections for all the fire alarm and cabling was not included in the bid documents. So this was asked, um, an ASI was issued, and priced up by merit, and uh, we deem it as a fair price to, to get the work done. You said that was due to code? Yeah, yeah. So in short, the masonry wall that I've mentioned before in between the commons area, the new addition in the pool, and the gym is a fire rate partition. Um, so when you have those openings in there in case of a fire event, it'll shut to really stop the fire from going from one building to the other. Hey Jason, can you just explain, you said it was an error, it was an error in emission or emission? Yes. Can you just explain to the room what that means and how that impacts the district? So I guess what that means, I guess so we've had this discussion at times that um, there's error emissions that the design professionals will make that sh in theory should have been in the documents and should have been part of the design. Um, so the old added that nobody's perfect, people are going to make mistakes. Now the goal would be to keep that E&O percentage low and minimize those mistakes. Um, but if you have that in the documents, you were going to pay for it previously anyway. So you're getting value out of these changes because you need to do it. It's part of the work that needs to be done to, to complete the overall structure. So in general, that's what it is. It's an error and omission that the designers make that you have to do. Is that good, good enough for you, Sandy? Yeah. Or need, I was Julie. 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 Yeah. Uh, Julie, yeah. sorry. So, so, so kind of building on that theme, and I know the you know some of the comments were about the construction and the budget and all that stuff. So, um, so there is an omission and change orders. Owner requested changes and unforeseen conditions. As far as you know, when you're building a building and you're getting out of the ground, that's where a lot of the unforeseen is. I mean, you can drill, you can core drill and see what's underneath the ground, but not until you start to do your footers, you really don't know what you're ending up against. And so it, there's a line item in the budget called contingency. And so if you look at the, um, the, you know, the agenda on every board meeting, um, you'll, you'll see it in the first meeting of the month is the construction report. You can always drill down on this. And so back in November of 2016, the budget on the, pro on the project was $94 million. All right? And today, on April 30th, as of April 30th, the budget is $94.6 million. But there's a $3.3 million contingency number that's in there to capture all those unforeseen and those things you don't realize that you need until you get in there and you do. So we have a $3.3 million contingency. And right now, I mean, we're what? Approximately 75% through the project? Yeah, I just looked at this today and I can pop that up. So we are probably 75% work in place. Okay. and materials store. Um, but yet, duration of your job, you're only like 60%. Right. Um, you did a huge percentage of work in the first two years in this project. <laughs> right. So, and so, so it, you know, in your estimation, I mean, a lot of the risk on that contingency is behind us at this point. Yeah, right? when we've talked, if you have a little bit of risk with the pace rate, right. getting on the ground, like you just mentioned. Um, and getting out of the ground for two A was a huge risk. And some of the connections to existing building in the tunnel, um, we've gotten past the majority of that. So yes, the risk is being reduced every day. So we have the $3.3 million contingency, and on this report, we've spent about 1.7 of that. So we still have a significant amount sitting there in that contingency line item. And the bond funds total $98 million, and the total contract, uh, the total projected budget of the job is 94.6. So we've got a 3.3 million dollar <coughs> surplus at that point. So. 
Thank you. Yeah, that's a good, great explanation. I thought that, um, that would be helpful for people to understand. Anything else, Jason? No, that, that was the discussion unless there's any questions for me. Now, I, I would just like to let everybody in the audience know as well, P.J. Dick was hired by the district to be basically our owner's rep, our construction manager, all in one. Um, they have served the Pittsburgh community for a long, long time in this capacity as either a general contractor or a uh, construction manager. And uh, Jason and his team basically have to um, look out for the district on, on our behalf when there's all these kind of questions that come up out in the field. And uh, you know, with, with their expertise, I can say I've never been involved in a construction project this size, and I do construction for a living. This is, this is what I do. Um, it has been quite remarkable we are actually where we are today based on the phasing of this project, the size of this project, and the beauty of this project when it's all said and done. So, you know, with their help and, and the guidance of this board and, and this district and the, and the wonderful people that we've had you know, as, our, as our contractors, I am, I'm very proud to say that this district is in a very, very good spot. These buildings are going to be a showcase. They are a showcase from the highway. And trust me, it is not going to happen that we're just building these buildings for no reason. We are building these buildings to further this district in education. And that is the focus and that is the goal. So I, I just want to thank Jason for the job PJ continues to do. And I thank everybody else for, for cooperating and, and getting it moved along. So um, you know, I, I'm just very, very proud of what we're doing and I want everybody else to be as well. Thanks, Jason. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Point four is the, a motion to approve the pay app summary. Does anybody have any questions regarding the pay apps? We can do these together. We have one motion. No questions? No comments? Anybody had a chance to review it? It seems pretty straightforward. No, no red flags there at all. All right, so I'd like to get a motion to approve Action discussion items 4.1. You uh, would anybody like me to pull the change orders out of this? Or yeah. Do you, okay, I thought you might there. All right, so I'll, I'll pull. Let's get a motion to approve 4.1 and 4.4. Mr. Kearney first. Second. Mr. Kramer second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Aye. <laughs> Opposed. Those two are moved. I'd like to get a second uh, motion to approve 4.2 change order from merit number 06 and 4.3 change order from merit 09. Mr. Kramer first. Second. Mr. Kaczynski second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. No. No. Mr. Cora and Mr. Mariano both opposed. And could I get uh, an explanation why you gentlemen the, the uh, change orders? Uh, if I'll you'd start. like. You yeah, don't have sure, to. I'll start. Yeah. Um, for the educators in the room, uh, I'd like to wish you a happy uh, Teacher Appreciation Week since today is the official day for Teacher Appreciation Week. Uh, but my big contention and why I'm on the board and I'm new to this uh, at CV, the buildings don't teach, teachers teach students. Uh, and over the last several years, we've got rid of teachers, and as some of the community members have stated, uh, we haven't replaced them to actually balance the budget. Uh, all educators know, as it was pointed out, uh, if you decrease class size, thus have more teachers, you'll increase student performance. So if we're going to sharpen our pencil and make things better for everyone, then everybody should sharpen their pencil. And the way to do that is to not include the change order. It's not in the original design, and you have to live with it. So I'm not going to vote for any change orders done forward. Mr. 
I, 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 gosh, you know me, I've been against change orders since I was on this board. Uh, I, I really believe in my heart when there is change orders, the district is the one that loses. Uh, if an architect or the design team, they forget something, I'm sorry, they should have to eat that, not the district. I've been through, this is my 40th year, I've been through nine of these building projects. And let me tell you, change orders, the districts get hurt, period. That's the way I feel. So, I Thank appreciate you. both your comments. Thank you. All right, this time I'd like to close the meeting with any additional public comments. Once you've now heard the, uh, the meeting, anybody else would like to step up and give us, give us uh, your comments? If not, I'd like to get a motion to adjourn. So move. Mr. Clark first. Second. Mr. Kaczynski second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you all for being here.